when we're talking about forced vaccinations these people are wearing a pillowcase across their face it's disgusting you go inside these stores now and they kick you out if you don't have a pillowcase on your face and owen it's so disgusting and disturbing to watch this because americans just are capitulating they're just rolling over if someone like me can provide people with political cover then you might see a little bit of spying, I hope, because I, I'm not wearing a mask. My daughters are not wearing a mask. And I can promise you this, that uh, if they keep on zapping up this cashless society like this, uh, we're going to have we're going to have to really start kind of deciding what we do as as people, because it looks to me like they're trying to force us into this submission ritual of mask yeah. and compliance. And the days now are for us to sit back and do nothing. There's no more time. We are back in the third and final hour of the InfoWars War Room. Wartime conservatism, ladies and gentlemen. Wartime conservatism is what is needed. Wartime conservatives is what is needed inside the Republican Party. President Trump is the bona fide example of this. It's time for the Republican Party to catch up. And another wartime conservative is Daniel McCarthy. He is running for office in Arizona. Reading a little bit about Daniel here. Turns out we have something in common. We both like the heat and we don't mind avoiding the snow every day of our lives. Uh, of course, Daniel is running in Arizona. He's a wartime conservative. That's why he joins me now, unabashed supporter of President Trump. So, Daniel McCarthy, thank you for joining me. Oh, and thank you for having me. You know, I see a major opportunity for Republicans, conservatives, patriots, Americans to retake this Congress back, not just for Republicans, because that's a nice headline political football game to play, uh, Republicans versus Democrats in Congress. But no, we need Republicans that are going to unabashedly support President Trump, unabashedly vote for his policies, and unabashedly stand up against the liberal mobs that are trying to shut us down. Uh, would you identify yourself as a wartime conservative? Absolutely. Yeah. I've been trying to tell people this all across Arizona that right now the United States is in the midst of an actual war. And the war that we're in is so complicated and so sophisticated that it's now time that you send individuals that have the capacity in the in the backbone to stand up against this radical left because they're rolling us over we're always playing defense and with president trump what we saw was is we got our identity back as americans and now it's time for this wave of conservatism to take over this country before it's too late uh, they're now making us wear the government on our face and they are closing down your churches closing down your businesses folks i, I at some point uh if we don't take back uh, the washington dc uh, we're going to have bigger problems. And I think people are starting to realize the power of D.C., which was never the intention of Congress, by the way. It was never the intention for politicos out of D.C. to be running your lives. Uh, but but it's turned into that. And that's why we need to send people into D.C. who are going to fight that. You know, and, and Daniel is a perfect example. You know, I have a whole list of people that are that are coming on this show that I say, hey, you know, these are wartime conservatives, man. And, and here's the opportunity. If we can get one or two or three, 10, 20, this changes everything. I mean, just look at the impact and the headlines that a radical leftist like AOC makes. I mean, imagine if we had voices actually fighting back against that every day in Congress. I mean, that's how not only can we save this country from the communist left right now, but... We can also stop this indoctrination into our youth and young people can say, hey, wait a second. It's not just these people that are active and fighting and entertaining. There's some conservative patriots that actually make more sense and actually are in it for my future. Yeah, I have four children, OK, and here's the thing. When I look at my children in the eyes, I will rather fight this war than give it to them. And, and we will fight this war on any battlefront. Right now, it's it's time to do this politically. We are taking back the United States Senate. Arizona has been plagued with the tyranny of John McCain. And I'm, I'm putting the death nail on that machine because realistically, for a long time, Arizona has been a gateway for many of the problems that the country is facing. A lot of people are unaware of how sophisticated the corruption is here. So... 
I'm excited to serve. We're, we're delighted to serve. I have, uh, I'm a business outsider. So my background is just a business background and I can see the writing on the wall. Think about this, Owen. They're talking about gun confiscation laws in Arizona. I mean, never in a million years would I have imagined in Arizona, we would be fighting for gun rights. This is the home of tombstone. Okay. So the radical left is emboldened. I'm going to make Rand Paul look like a leftist, okay? <laughs> I mean, when you send a guy like me to Washington, D.C. <laughs> That's a slogan right is, there. You're going to send a guy that is a, a strict constitutionalist. I don't care about emotions. I don't care what someone calls me. It doesn't matter what you say to me. And, and furthermore, we're going to use offensive tactics to take our country back. We have to stop allowing the government to weaponize every single agency that they can to go after patriots. They've been doing it my entire life. So it's time now that we take a stand and, and we fight back. That's why I had to do this. Oh, it's just so refreshing. It's honestly like, I mean, if we could get you and great wartime conservatives, in, it'd be such a weight lifted off my soldiers, soldiers, because I'm here in the media fighting this, you know, but like if we had people inside fighting this, oh my gosh, uh, seriously, it would be such a weight lifted because you talk about the organizations that target conservatives. I mean, whether it's the IRS or Media Matters, for whatever reason, the Republican Party or what we've seen from Republicans in the past, I do believe this is changing. I hope 2020 is the year we get the political grounds um, to, to, to claim, but they still cater to the Media Matters mobs. They still cater to the fear of what the media might say about them or what they did. This is th that that idea that that concept of the left or the media lurking behind you. So you're constantly looking over your shoulders, wondering what to do or licking your finger and seeing which way the wind blows. That has to that has to be dead and gone. Republicans yeah. and conservatives and patriots can't play that game anymore. Owen, oh, I, I will not take the paycheck to be your senator in Arizona. I will not take the pension. Uh, we are literally going to clog the arteries of Washington, D.C. One senator has a remarkable opportunity, and a lot of people don't know this, but you have 100 senators up there in Washington. Not one of them are calling these billionaires that are sponsoring this insurrection on the ground, by the way. Why do we not have people being held accountable for sponsoring insurrection, fostering communism in this country, trying to topple the freedom and liberty of our constitution. And why is it that, again, like you you said earlier, how are the Obamas getting away with what they've gotten away with? Why are, why are the senators uh, not calling these folks to Capitol Hill and making their lives miserable? It's time now that, like I said, we use the government uh, for our purposes, which is taking our country back. I want freedom for my children. And and once you um, once you realize how bad the situation is, you realize the writing's on the wall. The left is emboldened, and they're emboldened because of weakness. These Republicans, they they campaign like libertarians, but they govern like Democrats. And it's it's time for it to end. And guys like me, there's I hope there's a lot more of me when we get there. But I can promise you that. Uh, we're taking our country back. Well, look, just one Daniel McCarthy in Congress would be uh, so game-changing. Like I said, I mean, whether it's Joe Collins who is on as well, Laura Loomer, Kevin Speciale, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We start getting people like this, because that's the thing, too. They dominate, they get to dominate the Congress floor right now with their extreme rhetoric, which, which is built on a, a foundation of sand. When, when you have Republicans getting out there on Congress and making waves and making sound bites and making headlines, talking about the corruption of Obama, talking about how bad communism is, talking about big tech selling us out to China, that sticks. That's built on a foundation of cement, and that is actually going to stick. I mean, but we don't have those fighters right now, and, and the, one, the fighters that we do are kind of trying to battle the deep state. We don't have the fresh blood coming in and, and, and knowing how to make headlines in the new media era. Owen, oh, we've my Republican opponent said that we need a vaccination before we can stop social distancing. I mean, like I said, it's they're one party and it's time it we can't afford this any longer. When we're talking about forced vaccinations, these people are wearing a pillowcase across their face. It's disgusting. You go inside these stores now and they kick you out if you don't have a pillowcase on your face. And Owen oh, it's so disgusting and disturbing to watch this because Americans just are capitulating. They're just rolling over. If someone like me can provide people with political cover, 
then you might see a little bit of spying, I hope, because I, I'm not wearing a mask. My daughters are not wearing a mask. And I can promise you this, that uh, if they keep on zapping up this cashless society like this, uh, we're going to have we're going to have to really start kind of deciding what we do as as people, because it looks to me like they're trying to force us into this submission ritual of mask yep. and compliance and the days now are for us to sit back and do nothing. There's no more time. Yeah. Uh, we're about to take a break here, but just, just real quickly, did you ever imagine, I mean, you're a businessman. We're all, you're, you're a little older than me. We were both born in the eighties. Did you ever imagine you'd be running for Congress? No, as a matter of fact, I did everything in my power not to be a candidate. I donated $25,000 <laughs> to the Trump campaign and we spent a lot of time as an activist. I, it was kind of always a hobby, but I never so, wanted so, to be a candidate. So, you know what? Let, let's stick years. with that message because patriots are realizing they have to get involved now, folks. Welcome back in to the InfoWars War Room, brought to you by InfoWarsStore.com. Daniel McCarthy is still with us at Demand Daniel AZ. Is where you can find him on social media, the website DemandDaniel.com to find out more about his campaign. Folks, I don't think I have to tell you why we need Daniel in office. I think uh, just hearing for yourself, you can understand why it's so important to get Daniel and other like candidates into this next Congress. What is it, like the 175th or something? Uh, 175th, I think is what it is. Anyway, we were talking before the break, and I asked him, did you ever think that you would be running for Congress? Is this something that you ever thought you would do? And I think like probably most of us, you never think you want to be involved in politics. If you're like me, it's like, it's like I avoid politics like the plague. Like I never want to be involved. But when you see the state of America and where it's heading, you fight like hell to save it, to enshrine our freedoms for your lineage. Daniel has four children. He wants his children to grow up in the land of the free and the home of the brave not the land of the mask and the home of the slave. And so I just think it's amazing, Daniel. I, I see so many people, and your story is just one of them, that were never politically minded, at least never thought they'd run for office, you know, didn't ever want to have the title of being in office or be considered a politician. But we've realized now that title of politician, whatever tarnishment or, or, or you know, mud and dirt it may have on it, we have to get in there and become fighters in the arena to save this country. And so I would imagine someone like you never thought they'd run for office. Now here you are running for office, but running for office to save this country. It was actually a last resort. I can tell you, my, I grew up in a political home because my mother was the first woman councilwoman in the town I grew up in. And I watched what it did to her. And I actually grew up saying to myself, I'll never be a politician just because I watched the, the turmoil that she went through and the painstaking nights that she would go through. And that's so just I a local city council woman. Business was frankly very good to me. The business community was something I naturally did well. So I, I there was... I can tell you, I actually did everything in my power to stay out of politics, including helping good candidates out. So if I found a good candidate, I would get behind them and I would help them out. And then year over year, as things just got worse and worse, and then I would go back to these state legislators or these congressmen and women once they got to D.C. And it was like it was like someone flipped a switch. You know, they they got a taste of power. Or they got a taste of a position and they're all plotting their way to be president of the United States. Every time you look at one of them, it's like they're on this career path. So finally, I was like, guys, we're in the middle of an insurrection right now. As we're speaking, Owen, my governor, who's a Republican, by the way, in Arizona, just shut down our state practically, said that life is not going to go on as normal. And how long are we going to sit and take it? I mean, I'm running for office, but look, we're not going to deal with our schools being shut down, our churches being shut down, our gyms being shut down, our society literally coming to a screeching halt because of some globalist agenda of, of some sort. I mean, I think everyone's starting to wake up to the fact that we're in the middle of a war. And shame on the governor. If I get through this primary, I can tell you he's my very first phone call. And I can't wait to tell him, sir, you have 72 hours to leave office, leave our state. What are you doing here? Uh, it, 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 it's painful to watch. And you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a head scratcher, but it's, it's, it also, it's a heart scratcher because it, it hurts your heart to see that your, your candidates, your, your political representation is just completely violating their oath. I mean, just, it's like they never even took an oath. It's like they don't even want to be in a free country. They don't even care. 
and they just all buy into it. And again, folks, I, I've got more COVID news I'm going to cover here. It used to be controversial to call it a hoax. Folks, it's a hoax. There's a real virus. No. It, 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 it did kill some people. The flu ki killed some people. I mean, it, you know, there was a virus going around just like any other flu season, and it, it, it did kill some people. But the media's inflated it. The Democrats increased the death counts by putting people into nursing homes with COVID. And so, but now everybody's kind of starting to look around because it's hitting everybody. Like you said, the schools. Okay, well, not everybody has kids, but a lot of people have kids. Now it's hitting them. The gyms. Eh, some people go to the gym. Some people don't go to the gym. But guess what? Can't go to the gym. That now they're starting to wonder, why is that? I mean, bars, drinkers, ball games. I mean, so it's hitting everyone's life, and they're all realizing, wait a second, this was never about a virus. And so that's why it's so important to get candidates in office who understand that notion, and they aren't afraid to say it. They don't have the media bullies lurking behind them saying, don't say that, don't say that. No, they say, I don't listen to you. I say the truth. Yeah, I can tell you if this continues down this path, the the least of their problems is gonna are gonna be people running for office. Americans are not gonna tolerate this for much longer. You have governors, like I said, our Republican governor, are telling people that they have to wear a mask before they can go into a, a store. This is completely unconstitutional. They have no authority to do that. They're losing consent of the governed. And that's something that all of us need to recognize that they don't actually have this authority. Our rights are God-given rights. They have nothing to do with the government at all. And at some point they're breaking down the social contract. And I think we need to re-examine when is that line drawn? When it, where is the line in the sand? As far as, as, as far as I'm concerned, I think we're there. We're at that tipping point where we're not gonna tolerate this for much longer. And you can't tell us that we have to shut down until there's a vaccine because we're not taking a vaccine for a virus that they're already starting to call influenza-like illness. If you notice, it's just like how global warming went to climate change. They're, they went from coronavirus to influenza-like illness, just like that overnight. This started in March. We're now in the middle of July. You have to be, at this point, you have to be very low IQ in order to believe that something more isn't going on here. Everyone's starting to catch up to this and it's time to take our country back very quickly. And I advise these government officials that are involved with these boards, by the way, our governor here, for example, is on a board and they're funneling money from the federal government to pay their buddies. And it's it's right out in the open. They're not even hiding it anymore. It's they have they're so emboldened that they they're just doing it. So it's it's time to see some justice, I think. You know what? That is the messaging, though. You just hit on it. They are really what they're trying to do here is force you to take a flu shot. But they knew that they couldn't do that because there was already so much scrutiny over the flu shot. And they know they can't just force vaccinate. So what do they do? Oh, it's the coronavirus. It's the COVID. They have the media scare, the death counts, the inflation of the numbers, all of it. And then they say, oh, well, you got to take the shot. But at this point, you're just, you, you've been hit with so much propaganda and fear that, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take the shot, not even realizing it's just the flu shot. They've just rebranded, they've literally rebranded the flu, and now they want to force you to take the flu shot, but they've just rebranded the whole thing. And, you know, you, you've got four kids just, just in the last 60 seconds. I would imagine you want your kids to grow up like we did where you can go to the park, you can go to school, you can do all this stuff, and you're free to do it, that you don't have to be afraid of your kids going out, you don't have to make them take a vaccine or wear a mask to go out, and they can live in a free country. Yeah, it's, it's not about wanting, it's about they will be. My children will be living in a free America the way that we were given this country. We will, we will fight. If that, any battlefront necessary, they need to slow down very quickly. We're gonna take back these seats, I believe, in August. We have a very big, obviously, election here coming up in the next couple of weeks. Ballots are already in the mail. Go to my website, demanddaniel.com. We could use all the help we can get, but we're, we're taking back our government. Trust me on that. Well said, demanddaniel.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we need these wartime conservative patriots in Congress. It's the only way we can save this country, demanddaniel.com. Daniel, thank you so much. All right, when we come back, uh, we will cover, cover some of this other COVID news. Don't go anywhere. The 4th of July 2020 special has gone into high gear. We have 50% off 
bodies, really strong extract of turmeric formula. It's been sold out for months. That's back in stock. DNA Force Plus with the PQQ, the CoQ10. So good for your cells. So amazing. That's back in stock. 50% off. Winter Sun's been sold out for over three months. It's back in stock. Pure, high quality vitamin D3. Take it under the tongue. Greater absorption. So good for your whole body. So essential. That's back in stock. Ultra 12. Super high quality B12. Again, take it under the tongue. That is back in stock. Survival Silt X2. Nascent Ionine Spray. 33% off. And so much more. So I want to thank you all for this July 4th coming up for standing with us. And I want to invite you to take advantage of these great deals and great products that enrich yourself and your family's life and also fun. Hardcore truth. Again, take action. Big 4th of July sales right now at InfoWorksStore.com. We could not have done this without you. I thank you for your continued prayer, your focus, and your support. Again, I salute you all. Hey, you there. The battle for the Republic is on. The American Revolution 2.0 is happening right now. But the corrupt establishment doesn't want you to know, and they certainly don't want you to get involved. But you can at band.video. The truth lives at band.video. The information they don't want you to see is at band.video. This is your destiny. This is the epic battle for the future of humanity. America will survive as long as you fight. I've got to go.